Hey guys, so in today in this video, I'm going to try to explain to you um, something that's quite simple, but took me a little time to get my head around, um, which is the idea of Cubic's tick chain and it, its instant finality. And I'm going to try and explain this in the simplest way that I possibly can, so it makes sense to you and you realize why this is quite revolutionary compared to what um, most other traditional blockchains are doing. So let's get into it. So yeah, the, so I made this post recently um, on uh, X. These these posts here, I just made up this image here for this um, for this video. Now this is really obviously this is a poor image, but I just want to kind of make the make the point as simply as possible um, so that it makes sense. So basically, for any of you guys that don't understand, Cubic uh, most cryptos are based on what's called a blockchain, but Cubic is based on a tick chain. And as I wrote here. Something about Cubic, and Cubic's the first tick chain. Um, so something about Cubic that I took a long time to understand was the in idea of instant finality and the tick chain. I heard many people say that instant finality was impossible and they wrote off the tick chain as just a meaningless buzzword. I heard these comments even from major developers, so, hmm. and not, I don't think it was in a, any bad context, but um, Desh Shai from Casino was writing off this idea. Um, but I think the truth is that most people, including Desh, and he, you know, he wouldn't have taken the time to understand it, but I think they just don't understand Cubic. And, um, you know, I still don't completely understand it either. And, you know, only time's going to tell 100% if this works, but it makes it makes sense to me. Um, so let, let me explain some things is what I wrote, went around right here. And I said, at least as well as I can explain them, because I don't know this stuff in perfect detail. So this is a rudimentary breakdown. Um, but I think it's going to make sense to you, to you, to you all. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about the tick chain. So basically, Cubic works in what are called ticks and epochs. So we've got tick, 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 and an epoch. And um, so ticks are part of epochs. So epochs happen at twelve uh, o'clock UTC every Wednesday. So an epoch is a full week, and then ticks happen very regular regularly. Uh, I think the current tick time is two seconds, or s at least it soon will be, and eventually it aims to be sub second. Um, when you make a transaction or make a smart contract transfer, it is added to the current tick or an upcoming tick. So when I go to make a transaction on the Cubic network, I will might specify it to be added in the fifth upcoming tick, or I can try and push it through on the, the closest tick. When the time for the tick comes, um, two-thirds of the 676 core members must agree on the contents of the tick. So to do this, they, they do it by running software. I don't think software is accurate because that implies that there's an operating system. It's really just they ru all run codes on their computers, which is powered by their nodes. And this is basically um, Cubic's proof of work. The compute power secures the network. So Cubic, do, you know, a lot of people think it's not proof of work. It is proof of work, um, at least in my understanding in, th in this element. If the software of the two thirds of the that seven, 676 core members um, agrees on the contents of the tick, it is passed. If they disagree, the tick fails. So two thirds of the core members will call a software, you know, the code that they're running has to look through the contents of the tick, scan it through and say, yeah, I think this is what the contents are. Then, you know, the next one looks at it and says, I think this is what the contents are. And if two thirds of that 676 agree on the contents, the the um, tick passes and is added to the to the chain. And if they disagree, the tick fails. So if only 50% agree on it, the tick fails. So this is a you know a rudimentary breakdown of how a tick chain works. So um, we've got a tick. So tick, and we've got all these transaction IDs that I just made up that are in the tick. So that's our tick one, then two seconds pass, tick two, all the transactions within that mm. happen, two seconds, then tick three, and so on, all the way for a week. And once a week ends, an epoch takes place. And at the end of that epoch, all that data is taken and pruned away from the tick chain and put onto, I guess, what you'd call an epoch chain. That's my basic understanding of it. So you get an epoch chain and a lot of data is pruned and it's meant to make it way less data intensive and way, way quicker. Um, again, rudimentary understanding that I have of all this. So let's talk about true finality then and what that means. So 
most blockchains out there, if we take just the classic one of Bitcoin, they're disorganized messes. A group of transactions are added to a block, which is then added to a blockchain. So you've got transactions that are um, happening, and at the same time as they're happening, you've got people that are mining a block. And as once they mine the block, all the transactions that happened in that time are added to that block, and that block is added to the blockchain. But the problem is that the blocks are randomly added and then they must communicate with previous blocks before they're finalized. So they have to, and there's a name on this. And I, you know, again, I try to keep this simple and I could dive deeper into it, but I try to keep it as simple as I can. And again, I've got a rudimentary understanding of this, but they, whatever the name is, they have to communicate with all the past blocks and say, hey, yes, I'm correct. I meant to be part of this blockchain and I work. And I think finality on something like Bitcoin can take um, quite a long time before true finality. Then you get you know, way better software um, networks now like CAS. And I think that finality might be a few seconds. Um, so that, that means that it takes time before uh, a transaction is truly finalized on the blockchain or a block is truly finalized. With Cubic, a tick happens and all transactions are updated. Then another tick ha happens and all these do is communicate with the previous tick. So we've got tick one and then we've got tick two just happens and straight away it just communicates with tick one and that's it finalized same with tick three instant finalization it's it's really simple it's just that instead of blocks randomly here which has got one straight tick two straight tick three straight tick communicating backwards with the other ticks so it will instantly communicate with the previous tick and at that point all transactions are finalized and it's just as simple as that tick communicate with previous tick finalization and again you know i want to really outline this is a rudimentary explanation but I think it's good for someone like me to explain this who's not the most technical person in the world because when, you know, if someone technical is explaining this to you, they'll go into massive detail on it and they'll have everything right factually. But the only problem with that is that um, you, it's, you know, someone like me struggles to understand that. But when you have someone like me explaining it, I think I'm getting the basics of it correct here. Um, I'm sure someone technical could comment on this video and, and explain some more technical elements, but I think the basis of it is, is really just that simple. Tick happens, two seconds pass, next tick happens, communicates with the previous tick, instant finality, tick keeps going like that. Then after a week, an epoch happens, all transactions then go on to the previous epoch, data prunes, um, and then we're, it's the first take of the new epoch and so on. And it's a really efficient uh, process. It's a really unique and innovative pro uh, process, which is kind of like everything with Cubic. But like with everything with Cubic, we've got to see this in action over time and see how, how great it's going to be. So the conclusion that I came to when I was writing this post is, you know, this is the important part. Cubic, as far as I'm aware, is really unique and innovative in how it operates. Imagine this on a worldwide scale. So you're imagining a worldwide scale. All the transactions and smart contracts in the world are happening. So tick. All transactions and smart contracts update and finalize instantly. Tick. Next batch update and finalize instantly. Tick. Your granny sends you $10. Your loan payment goes to the bank. The ownership of your new car switches to you by smart contract. Tick. Everything else updates and finalizes and this all happens in a week then on a wednesday at 12 o'clock utc an epoch happens all that approves and the new epoch begins so if you look at back this way you know, you've got a, your loan payment going out here a smart contract saying that you now have ownership of a car and um, your granny sends you ten dollars or ten euro and um, all that's in this one tick next tick happens and um, we're on to the next tick then I don't know, you're send, you're paying the mortgage of your house, you're sending money to a friend, something like that. That tick happens, it connects with the last tick, instantly finalizes, and we go on and on and on, all the way through the week, till we get to the end of the epoch, then the epoch connects with the last epoch, all data prunes, and we've got a really, um, uh, a, a real low amount of data that we're adding to, to the system and it's it you know it's quick and efficient basically um and as you know to me it seems like an incredibly efficient you know from my untechnical point of view it seems like an incredibly incredibly efficient and unique way to do things but it also surprises me that no one else has tried this it seems like such i guess all the great ideas are simple ideas that you think why didn't anyone else try this um so i'm trying to understand cubic from a layman's perspective so there are many things i don't understand but the more i can wrap my head around it the more i'm realizing that this 
at least seems to me to be an extremely innovative product and it appears to be way ahead of the game and thinking far ahead of competitors. That's the opinion that I have, um, but only time will tell on this and we'll see in the future. That's all I've got for you today, guys. I'll see you all on the outside. Thank you.